How's it going? Um, I just got my new bit of kit in here. Today I've picked up a Think Tank airport takeoff bag. This is going to be my new uh, main bag for work. Um, working as a wedding photographer, I've got to carry a bit of kit around with me. Um, the reason I went with this bag, for other reasons than it being, you know, Think Tank, which are, you know, such a high quality, high quality bag, was mainly because I will be travelling at times and I want all my kit in one bag that will fit into a carry-on. Um, other reasons, of course, are it's got the wheels, easy access getting around places, but mostly it comes with a set of backpack straps, uh, which just fold out so I can put it on my back and, you know, run around if need to be. Um, also, another reason is I, I like to ride my motorbike to work, so it, it's very nice I can just throw it on my back, jump on my bike, go to work, rather than have to drive around in the car all the time. So what I'm going to do now for this uh, little video, just for a bit of fun, I'm going to try to set up the interior of this bag. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever used uh, Think Tank before or not, but one of the things that comes with these bags is an amazing amount of dividing space. These are your dividers, this is how it comes from Think Tank. And, um, Basically, you can customize it to fit your kit, and uh, from what I've read online from lots of people and from personal experiences in the past, um, customizing these little Velcro pullouts and stuff is a major pain in the butt. Now, Think Tank uh, are kind enough to set you up with this lovely little inlay. Uh, so, for you Canon users here, it shows you some of the Canon kit with a few of the you know commonly used lenses in a pro bag. Uh, for Nikon on the other side, you got Nikon things. Now, if you shoot with Pentax or something, I'm oh, sorry, you're out of luck. But um, yeah, for you, for the Nikon and Canon users, you can look at that and say, "Oh yeah, I've got that lens. That'll look good right there," which is a bonus. But I'm not really going to be using that today. So anyway, from here we go. This could take hours. So instead of uh, just uh, sitting here doing it slowly and boring the hell out of you, I'm going to do a quick time lapse of me <laughs> going nuts trying to set this thing up. All right, enjoy. Okay, so I think we're pretty much done now. Um, that really didn't take as long as I was expecting from what I've heard online from a lot of people. Um, I guess in many ways I already knew what I wanted to do with, uh, with my kit as it stood. Now, this section here I've left open because uh, the camera I'm using to film this is my D800 and that'll go in here. Uh, I'll just explain a little bit about what my setup is and also I figured this would be a good time to, uh, to show, show you guys uh, what I keep in my camera bag for shooting weddings. Now I don't have everything in my gear here. I've still got my uh, my loop, my hood band loop, which I always carry with me. Um, the other thing that I'll definitely be carrying with me, which I don't have with today, is my spider holster. I always carry my my cameras on a spider holster. I do have the strap here on the camera at the moment, but that's just because I used it the other day, uh, just doing a walk around, and I didn't feel like using the holster, so I whacked that on. But most times I won't have that on there. The other thing which I don't have on today, which I need to check just to make sure it'll go in right and size-wise and all that is on my D700 here, I always use my battery grip. Now with the spider holster, you've got the pin as well that sticks from the bottom. So I may have to rearrange this a little bit differently when I do put the grip on there just to, just to see whether it'll fit, because it's pretty flush right now. More than likely, I'll rearrange that and have it off to the side, or I'll have it on this side here and have my D800 on this side. But I haven't figured that out. Okay, so a little bit about what's in my kit and why I use it. Um, so, always got to carry two bodies with you when you're shooting a wedding. Um, you, look, it doesn't matter how good a photography you are, you will sometimes have equipment failure. And if you don't have a backup camera, then that wedding's done. And it's not something you can just postpone for another day. So, always carry a backup camera. The other reason I like to do it is because, you know, things are happening at different speeds and different paces. Um, I, I usually, during a wedding, I'll carry either my 28 to 70 or my 70 to 200 on one side and I'll have my 17 to 35 on my other camera. That way it's like quick draw, you know, like if I see something happening at a distance, I reach for this camera. If something happens and I want to grab a wide shot, I simply reach for this camera. And that way I can shoot both without having to screw around, change lenses, um, you know, on the fly, which is not something I'm really into. Okay, so a little bit about my kit. Um, as I said before, I use uh, at the moment a D700 um, and I'll use a D800. Now, majority of my shots I'll be doing uh, with my, you know, my zoom lenses and stuff. So that's why for that I'll be using my D700 with the battery grip. Main reason, just the way it feels in my hand without a battery grip and a nice and like a long lens like a 70 to 200. Um, it just gets really tiresome on my hand holding the camera the whole time. So I like to have the battery grip for the balance and the weight. 
Um, with my D800, I haven't bought the battery group yet because it's another 400 and something dollars. So for that, for the time being, I'll just be using that with my wide angle lens or with my 50 mil. Okay, so let's go through a little list of what I've got here. Let's start with flashes. I, I'm a Nikon shooter, so I have a uh, an SB900 speed light. I also carry with me an SB700 speed light. Um, reason I use these two in particular, um, SB900 is my main my main speed light simply because of having the ability to put in a flash sync cable. Also, it's got that little extra power, the little extra zoom, which is uh, useful at times. Unfortunately, however, the SB900 has an overheat problem, and uh, you can switch that off. But I'm just a little bit nervous about switching it off because I don't know if it's in there. It's probably in there for a reason. I don't want to blow a $600 flash just because I wanted to take a few extra shots. So for that reason I always carry my SP700 which doesn't have the overheat problem. Um, fortunately this particular flash doesn't come with the, uh, the P6 sync cable and uh, slot. I don't know why they didn't do that. Such a simple little useful additive but because of that I can't use this with my pocket wizards. Um, basically if I'm going to be using t two flashes I'll, uh, I'll put this one on slave mode and have it triggered by this one. Uh, but the main reason I have this is for scenes like parties and stuff where I want to use a um, flash to, to bounce off the roofs and stuff and I just carry the one on each camera. Uh, so that's the main reason for that. It's also during the weddings it's kind of a backup for me. Uh, I like to shoot off camera flash as much as possible, especially on locations. Um, and I don't like things you know, messing up and having problems. So I've gone ahead and got myself the Plus 3 Pocket Wizards. Um, highly recommend these bit of kit. Uh, they don't have the hot shoe connection, but what you can do is uh, use this simple little cable, headphone jack plugs in here, and your sync cable straight into your SB900 there. Perfect. Um, for using them on a, on a light stand, I've got this little adapter here for the light stand, this little uh, rubber cable switch. That basically clips onto the light stand, cable wraps around, holds the pocket wizard tight to your light stand. Now, one of a couple of reasons I recommend this is when if you've got these sitting up above or hanging from the light stand or something like that and your light stand uh, when you're shooting outdoors a bit of breeze knocks it fly knocks it over um, these things are going to break and they just cost too much money to be thrown around like that however securing it down on the light stand a little bit further down it's less likely to impact uh, you're probably going to smash a strobe but you might not smash these so you're saving one little bit of kit just by thinking ahead so that's uh, something I'd go with there I'll just stuff those back in their, their new home um, okay, always good to keep fast glass with you, of course. So um, I've got the 50 mm 1.8. Uh, this is, you know, one of my go-to lenses in dark places. Also, when you're shooting in the particular places I shoot a lot of the time, so I'm shooting the bride while they're getting ready, getting their makeup and hair done. Uh, the room's quite dark and it's it's quite small, but uh, the 50 mm seems to be about perfect for a lot, well, a good half of the shots I shoot in there, if not more. So always keep a nice fast bit of glass with me. Um, that's it. I mean, all my glass is pretty fast, but um, which it has to be. But um, yeah, I like to have that little bit extra speed. Uh, here, what I've got here is my uh, Pixel Pocket wallet for my memory cards. Always carry extra memory cards. You never know when you're going to overshoot or have a card failure or whatever. So basically, this will hold four CFs and three SDs. Uh, this is quite useful now um, because with the, the D800, it of course has the SD slot. Uh, the backup, the new D600 that's coming out is all SD. Uh, I'm not so sure I ever like that. But having my main raw files going straight to my um, CF card and then backing up on the SD in, say, you know, JPEG or something like that, just in case, it's always a bonus. So I definitely want to keep that, keep extra memory cards because you never know when you might need one. Um, just here, this is just a uh, an attachment for uh, putting a tripod or a light stand on the side of the bag which I'll be using pretty much most of the time so this pocket here will most likely contain my Hoodman loop. Now the reason I use a Hoodman loop which I don't have with me at the moment, it's stuck at work at the moment but the main reason I use a Hoodman loop is because I shoot outdoors a lot and uh, when you chip in the back of the camera outside which you have to do sometimes um, yeah the glare on the back of the screen you can't really see properly if you've got the exposure right or the focus right at some times. Now you can use the, the highlight feature that will help you show where you're blowing your highlights um, but for me personally it just hangs around my neck, gives me a chance to get a, a quick view of what's going on. Uh, great for group shots because you can do a quick scroll through, you've got that extra zoom function it's completely shaded so when you're doing group shots and you want to make sure everyone's eyes are open it's fantastic for that. Okay, um, next bit of glass, I've got my 70 to 200mm 2.8 
Very important to be shooting with uh, straight through 2.8s. You want to be using fast glass for weddings. You never know what the light's going to do. It could suddenly, you might walk into a very dark chapel. The, you might have to shoot at a party hall that's darker than you're expecting. Having that little bit extra fast glass, very important. Uh, other lens I use here, my wide angle is a 17 to 35 2.8. Um, now there's a 16 to 35 out, which is an f4. Uh, you don't really need 2.8 so much with a wide angle, it's just nice to have it. main reason is I like this lens is it's just sturdy. I just like the weight and feel of this lens. For me, I, I really appreciate that extra bit of bulk in that lens. Okay, and then of course here I've got the 28 to 72.8, the beast. Um, the reason I've got this one is simply a budgetary thing. Uh, the 2470 is a little bit out of my price range at the time when I bought this, when I needed to buy one of these lenses. So I went with this, it's a bit cheaper. Still a great bit of glass, resolves fine on the 800 and the 700, and super fast, super smooth, very sharp. So it does the trick for me at the moment. And then, of course, like I said before, the D700, and I'll have a D800 in the bag as well. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's basically going to be what I keep in my camera bag. Um, I'll just show you a few actual features of the bag itself. Just zip that one up for a second. So at the front here, you've got uh, things that comes with this locking system. Of course, it's a waterproof pouch. Here is a good pouch for putting in a laptop or whatever you know your personal little effects, whatever you want to keep in there. Uh, a lot of times, I'll get a, a request sheet, a bunch of whole, uh, a bunch of sample photos that the couple would like to take something similar of, so I can stuff that in the front of my bag, keeps it dry and keeps it safe so I can pull it out at any time. Easy access for that. Okay, you've got, as with all think tanks, you've got these really nice, strong, sturdy carry handles, uh, which is fantastic. I really like them. They're really good and sturdy. Uh, up on the top here, let's just have a look. You've got just a little pouch, great little spot just to stuff whatever, I don't know, your keys, your phone, or whatever you need to put in there. Um, there's your address card holder for when you're traveling. Unzip this bad boy here and you've got a quick access, uh, whatever that's called, I don't even know, just a carry arm, maybe it's written on here somewhere. Um, the handle, there we go, think tank of thought ahead on that one. Pull the handle nice and simple, folds right nice and quickly, and you can adjust that to several lengths, just really quick on the fly when you pull it out. Um, there's more little pockets here, I guess if you're traveling for your documents or whatever, which is always nice. Now, the main reason I bought this bag uh, apart from the ones I've already stated, was this. Uh, as I said before, I like to ride my bike, I like to be mobile, and just quickly pull this flap down, flip the bag down, put a little Velcro down there to secure it, pull out your uh, back strap, uh, your back pack straps. Sorry, I probably slipped way out of flint, a frame here now because I'm shooting at a weird angle. And then, just like that, your bag's on your back, ready to go, nice and secure. And the best thing about this, which I found out afterwards, is the flap that folds down here actually turns into a bit of a lumbar support. And it sits right in your lower back. It's, it's quite comfortable. Just, um, I don't know if you can see, but I'll just show you. Just there, that, that little extra fold around makes a really nice lumbar support. Um, that feels so comfortable, I, I kid you not. And the padding along the back here is really quite nice too. Straps are nice, really nice and broad, got a good padding to them. So even with a fully loaded kit, it, it's not a burden to carry. This is a really beautiful bag. Anyway, I'm Adam L. This is what's in my camera bag and how to put together the think tank. It really did not take anywhere near as long as I've heard people complain about. Um, I guess different strokes for different folks. People like to configure things different. For me, straight up, straight down, it was a quick, simple put together. Very, very stoked with the bag. And Think Tank, if you ever want to sponsor me, I'm right here. Just kidding. Adam L, tips from the middle rung. Happy shooting.